check. Um, and the, 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 the presentation today is going to be around 40 minutes and I'm going to cover uh, three main uh, 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 aspects of uh, therapeutic proteins, uh, uh, which is uh, pharmacokinetics. That's what you can see here on the left hand of this sketch. How does silation of uh, proteins uh, impact uh, PK? Uh, then I'm going to talk about the challenges that um, these molecules pose uh, when we want to analyze them, uh, especially for silation. And then I want to introduce you briefly to some of the concepts that we use to screen these samples uh, and overcome some uh, of the limitations um, of uh, traditional ways of analyzing uh, glycoproteins. So uh, let's uh, have a look at the outline of this uh, presentation. Uh, I'll uh, introduce you very quickly uh, to uh, Pia Biotech. Um, then I'll uh, continue with an overview on sialic acids uh, and sialate uh, uh, glycans. Uh, I will discuss um, uh, the uh, effect, uh, effect that sialation has on pharmacokinetics of uh, uh, on uh, yeah, different kinds of glycoproteins. So that's going to be complex glycoproteins, but also FC fusions and uh, IgG. And I'll show you data from yeah, rather recent uh, uh, papers so that you have like a really nice update on, on the, the, the current uh, knowledge uh, uh, in, this, in this field. And then we can come up with uh, some uh, CQA considerations for the different uh, glycoproteins uh, and in terms of silation. Um, so that's going to be the first part of the presentation. Then I'll switch to the analytical approaches which are around uh, and the challenges that come, uh, come with it. And as I said at the end of my uh, talk, I will uh, show you essay solutions that we at PIA have developed uh, to screen uh, for silation and overcome some of the uh, limitations of other methods. So uh, a quick uh, introduction of PIA Biotech, a company that I co-founded uh, back in 2014. Uh, we're based in Cologne uh, in Germany uh, and that's why I, I am at the moment. So uh, PIA has uh, developed a technology which enables the high throughput analysis um, using no wash uh, bead-based assays uh, and we do have two types of uh, products these are assay kits that are used for the high throughput data analysis uh, for example in clone screening and upstream development and the other uh, product is assay kits to do uh, high throughput glycan screening and we work um, uh, around the globe and our distributor uh, in the US happens to be Tecmatic. Um, so Katie is from uh, Tecmatic uh, and they have uh, helped us uh, setting this webinar up. So thank you very much for this. Uh, and we're now uh, getting into the, 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 the topic and this is uh, sialic acids and uh, sialated glycans. So this is uh, kind of an introduction about this rather complicated uh, matter. So sialic acids are amino sugars uh, based on neuraminic acid um, that cap the uh, glycan structures uh, that are present uh, on glycoproteins. So here on the bottom you see a neuraminic acid. Uh, you have uh, on the five position you have the amino function and then the two position you have the carboxy group sitting here. And on the remaining positions you can have different kind of residues uh, which can uh, make up uh, yeah, uh, quite some diversity of sialic acids. So I think there are something between 50 and 60 different uh, sialic acids uh, known at this point. But the main species um, uh, which we find on, on uh, glycoproteins are the two which are, are, are um, shown here. So either with the acetyl group uh, on the amino uh, function here or the glycine group here. Uh, these kind of um, glycans are a little bit special because they are introducing negative charges uh, to glycan chains which are otherwise uh, neutral. 
and these silic acids um, can uh, reside either um, on so-called N-glycans or on O-glycans. And as you will see on the next slides, these um, N and O-glycans can be uh, quite different. So let's have a look first um, on uh, silated uh, N-glycans. So there is a, a consensus sequence for the glycoside in, um, uh, in proteins, uh, which you can see here. So it's easy um, to predict uh, glycosylation if you know the sequence uh, of your protein. Uh, that's not the case for, for O-glycans, um, unfortunately. The N-glycans have a, core, uh, a common core motif, which is um, containing these three mannose uh, units here which are uh, attached to these two uh, gluconacs here. And typically you also have a core uh, fucosylation here um, uh, on this gluconac uh, uh, structure. So these um, uh, glycans, especially the, the highly silated glycans, can be very uh, complex glycans uh, with bi, tri or tetraenet antennary structures. So they're branching, uh, uh, Often they have only two branches, but they can have three or even four. Uh, the sialic acid is found uh, at the end of the structures, and you can even find these kind of polysialic uh, acid uh, extensions um, and uh, hybrid structures in which the branches uh, look different. So uh, that gives you a, a flavor of what kind of different uh, structures you can find um, uh, on glycans. And what makes uh, what matters worse is that complex glycoproteins can have several uh, N-glycosides, which can be populated by different these different um, uh, glycans, uh, whereas the FC domain uh, on FC fusion proteins or on antibodies only has one glycoside with usually rather low uh, degree of silation, which makes them rather easy to analyze. So if we're looking at the, the O-glycans, uh, you can see right away uh, uh, on these structures here on the bottom that the glycan chains that you find on O-glycans and glycans are a lot shorter uh, than uh, N-glycans. There's no common uh, core structures, but you have different kind of core structures in oak lichens. And you can also see that there's no mannose present in these oak lichens. As I already mentioned, there's no consensus sequence missing. So one usually don't know exactly uh, if uh, and how much uh, oak glycosylation there is, or it's difficult to find out. Oak lichens uh, usually are less common than end lichens. But they still can have, um, there can still be um, potentially several glycosides in complex uh, glycoproteins. And I'll show you uh, a couple of examples uh, later uh, in this presentation um, uh, where this is uh, important. Uh, so there are no glycosides for O glycans and FC domains. So uh, it's ra rather easy to analyze FC domains. So um, if we uh, look at what kind of factors uh, influence uh, the silylation on, on, on glycoproteins, there are se several factors that one has to mention. The first one is the expression uh, system, which, um, for example, uh, determines the linkage um, uh, with which uh, the silic acid is linked uh, to the galactose residue. So um, here on the bottom, you see two uh, typical structures. And on the left-hand side, you see um, that the silic acid here is linked uh, to the galactose uh, on the sixth position of the galactose. So that's the structure that you find uh, in, su in human cell lines, uh, for example, in HEC-293 uh, cells, but also, for example, in, in mouse cell lines. Uh, the uh, linkage that you find in Cho cell lines is the 2-3 uh, linked silic acid. So in this case, the silic acid is attached to the galactose in the three position. 
so uh, that's the first factor um, that kind of determines or influences the silylation uh, of um, uh, proteins. The second one is the cell line or the clone, uh, which means the genetic uh, setup uh, of the cell that produces the, the protein, uh, which means also that it's uh, possible to uh, change or modify um, uh, the, the degree of silylation, for example, uh, using genetic engineering. Uh, another uh, important factor that determines um, uh, glycosylation and silylation um, uh, uh, in the, on the protein is the cell culture conditions. So um, uh, that has a huge impact and one uh, quite often observes that um, uh, towards the end of cell cultures, uh, the degree of silylation, for example, uh, uh, drops. Uh, and this, for example, could be due to uh, degradation, extracellular de degradation in the late date space of cell culture, and also um, uh, be due to a lack of galactosylated uh, glycan precursors, uh, which then uh, usually would be uh, afterwards capped with sialic acid. So let's uh, leave this um, at that with the introduction to um, uh, silic acid and uh, silylated um, uh, glycans and look at the, the importance uh, that um, silylation in particular has uh, when it comes to pharmacokinetics um, and here i want to start off with yeah mentioning the, the main parameters that uh, rule uh, the pk of therapeutic proteins so in general, there are three main mechanisms um, that are responsible for uh, the depletion or the recovery of proteins uh, in the human, human body. And two of those are directly related um, uh, to glycans. The first um, is the removal of terminal galactosylated glycoproteins via the acyaloglycoprotein receptor in the liver, which means that uh, not completely or fully silylated glycoproteins are cleared uh, more efficiently from, 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 from the body. Uh, the second is uh, the removal of mannosylated glycoproteins by the mannose receptor, which is present in uh, hepatic cells and macrophages. So these are the two removal uh, mechanisms. Uh, and the, the very important um, a mechanism for recovering uh, of C FC domains um, is uh, the recovery uh, by the neonatal receptor, um, uh, which uh, kind of uh, um, hinders uh, the, the degradation in the lysosome and makes sure uh, that FC uh, containing uh, proteins are yeah, kind of recycled. Um, into the bloodstream. So these are the three main uh, parameters which are important here and play a very big role in pharmacokinetics. <clears throat> and if you look at the half-life of the cl of different classes of therapeutic proteins, then you will see that FC-containing mo molecules have a, a much longer half-life than other molecules, and that the affinity to this uh, FC that receptor is really important. If you look at this uh, graph here, you will see that in general, uh, antibodies have the, ha the highest uh, half-life um, and that um, high affinity to uh, uh, the FCRN is important. Um, in general, the FC uh, uh, fusion proteins have uh, a shorter half-life, but those who have a higher affinity um, to the receptor uh, have an increased half-life. If you compare that to other proteins like EPO, for example, uh, this is a rather long half-life. Uh, those are uh, somewhere uh, around half of the day. So that means that um, it is possible to optimize pharmacokinetics uh, by genetic engineering, and you can do this um, uh, in two ways either targeting um, um, 
yeah, or going for a higher affinity of the ST towards um, uh, the neonatal receptor or, or by improving uh, the glycosylation, especially the silylation uh, of the product.